all right welcome back to the channel and it's been a hot six months probably seven by the time this video is posted since i've last posted um so yeah so i'm back um and in this video we're going to be doing encoders and decoders and then maybe like a little bit of program memory also in an attempt to post more regularly i'm going to try and post like other content so yeah we'll see how that goes but anyway let's just get right into it Alright, so as the title suggests, we're going to be doing encoders and decoders today, so let's just start off with encoders. So what an encoder does is it takes the base 10 inputs, just the regular counting numbers, you know, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and converts them into binary, so that the ALU and the rest of the computer system can read them. And conversely, a decoder takes binary and converts it into base 10. As far as positioning goes, an encoder takes the inputs and converts them for the computer to read, whereas the decoder takes the computer's outputs and turns them into base 10 for us to easily read. And unlike any of the previous episodes in this series, an encoder or decoder isn't strictly necessary for the computer to work, but it's a really easy conveniency feature that you'll almost certainly want. Anyway, that's enough of the explanation, let's get right into the building. So here's a smaller, more condensed version of what's up there connected to the ALU, for demonstration purposes. And once you get the concept, it's pretty easy to understand and replicate. Basically how it works is that the blue lines are the binary and will be hooked up to the ALU directly into its inputs. And the orange lines are the base 10 that will convert into binary. So what you're going to want to do is create this sort of setup with the lever torch redstone on the orange line. And place a torch on the side of the orange line above the binary that it represents. So for example, the number 1, you're going to put a torch over the binary line 1 on the side of the orange line. Uh, and that'll stand for 0001, like in binary. And for, say, the number 7, you would put a torch over the lines 1, 2, and 4, or 0, 1, 1, 1. And so since this is just an 8-bit machine, you're going to only have to make enough encoder lines for it to count up to the number 8 on both input A and input B. Now moving on to decoders, which are, in my opinion, slightly more complicated, but still pretty easy. It basically does the reverse of the encoder. It's really an AND function for the number. So if the number 7 appears, it's going to say is 1 AND 2 AND 4 on, or else it's not 7. As for building, it's pretty straightforward. They're all going to have this base with the repeater and the top row to transfer the redstone signal to. As for the middle ro risen up blocks, I guess, that's where you're going to add a certain redstone structure to convey what number it is. So here's the representation. You're going to have this redstone torch structure if it's going to transfer up, or you're going to have a single redstone torch just on the block if it has no relevance. So here you see the number 1, so it's only going to transfer up the number 1 binary line using this redstone structure, and everything else is just going to have a redstone torch on top, signifying it has no relevance. Uh, right now I'm going to build the number 7, and we're going to just transfer up 1, 2, and 4, and H just going to have a single redstone torch up because it has no relevance. And that's the end of the video. Anyway, thanks for a thousand subscribers. Literally never thought we'd get here. It's, we're at like 995 right now, but like close enough, you know? Um, I was thinking about doing a 1000 subscriber like setup tour or something. So let me know if you're interested in the comments. But again, just thanks a lot.